Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Photoshop in 2022. So first of all, don't worry about your Photoshop version. As long as it's above 2019, usually the Photoshops are generally almost the same already. So this is the breakdown of what I will be showing you. So introduction, I'll show you some of my art, uh, what tools you need, important tools and shortcuts to know in Photoshop, a drawing system, and um, what you can do after knowing the things that I will be showing you. So introduction uh, some of my artworks look like this and all of them are drawn using purely photoshop only so i just wanted to show you the things that you could do with photoshop to draw even though photoshop is actually made to be a drawing soft uh, uh, a photo editing software but i use it to draw and a lot of people do too and you can as well okay so when you just open photoshop it should look something like this and then you want to go over here and create new or shortcut is Control and N. This will bring up this box here and then you can choose what size you want to create your artwork. So I would recommend going into print since generally when we draw, we want to print it into a physical copy to sell as a poster or something. And then you just choose whatever size you want. Lah. Generally, I will use a A3 and always make sure that your resolution is 300 uh, pixels per inch or higher but generally 300 is enough because most printer can only print up to 300 dpi color mode I like to use RGB but you can use CMYK it's depending on uh, what your printer needs but generally everybody use RGB and it's also the default 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit this one uh, I would recommend maybe taking a 16 bit if you do a lot of color gradation but generally, 8-bit is what I use for all the illustrations that you saw just now. But let's just go to a 16-bit uh, background, leave it as white. This one, uh, make sure that it's under square pixels. And create. So next, I'll be talking about what kind of tools you need to actually draw on Photoshop. You need to actually have a drawing tablet before you can start drawing on Photoshop. Otherwise, you will not have pressure sensitivity. So let me use a brush that actually has pressure sensitivity, but use my mouse. It becomes like this. So there's no gradation, there's no thick or thin in your brush strokes. Whereas if I'm using uh, my tablet now, you can see the lines are so much smoother and I can have a gradation. And I can have thick and thin lines, just like when you're doing a line art for your illustrations. If it's not appearing, then maybe you can try clicking this, which is the pressure sensitivity. And this as well, which is pressure sensitivity for size. So the kind of tablet I'm using now is Deco 01B2, which is just a basic tablet with uh, no screen. As compared to when you see some artists like Ross Draws and have those 27 inch like as big as my computer already those kind of screen right to draw which is uh, better for for getting the gestures in because you can use your whole arm but if you're just starting out or intermediate level then getting a tablet without a screen is actually more much more affordable and you can actually get the same result so next I'll be talking about the tools that you need to know in Photoshop. So that there is the 80-20 rule, which is 80% of the things in Photoshop you actually don't need to touch for whatever you're doing. And 20% is the tools that's actually used for creating illustration. So I'll go through some of the important tools that you need to know. So come over here, you'll see this toolbar. If it doesn't appear, you maybe one of your maybe you click this arrow here, that's why it's very short. Or you had it or you had it as and click closed. Anything that is accidentally closed, right? Just go to Windows and find. Okay, so now I have these. I will, you can click B for brush, and it will lead you here. And you can right click, and then you can have all the different kind of brushes in your Photoshop. I have a lot of brushes because I download online, but generally you have just some basic brushes, which is enough to get you started. So I'll be using this brush and as I will show you it will be like this. So if I want to erase, I press E. E for eraser and B for brush. Then just erase like this. And when you come over here, you need to know about this, which is the this square box with a plus sign. Actually gives you a new layer. So if I'm drawing something like this, 
and then I draw something at the layer below. Okay, let me choose a red color. Now if I want to just erase this layer, it will not affect the layer on top. Yeah, magic! Okay, so let me just delete this. The next thing uh, that you need to know is um, how to undo. So you draw something, Control Z, undo. And how to undo your undo, how, how to redo, is Control Shift, and Z. So if I have this, 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 and I undo, 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 Control Shift, Z, I bring it back. Okay. Some other tools to know, which are very helpful, is how to color pick something. So let's say I have like so I have red, I have purple, okay, I have pink. And then I am coloring something over here. That but then I want to take this color. While I'm holding my brush, so I'm in brush tool, I press alternate, it will automatically go to the ink dropper tool. So I can switch between colors very fast. Okay, then remember Ctrl Z undo. And the last tool that you need to know that's very important is the lasso tool. So press L is the shortcut and it will come and you can make a selection and then you can color within the selection. So this is the tool that I used to do very precise things. So for example, I want to draw a, a eyelid. Then I just use this lasso tool, press L or just click over here. Then after that, I can just fill it in. Then Control D is to deselect. Okay. And uh, uh, one more thing I, that I think I can share is if you press this, it will lock whatever is on this layer. So if now I want to color the edge of this uh, eyelid, it will only affect the area that I have drawn just now. This also works if you create a new layer and then you press alternate at the bottom part of the layer. It will create a mask on top of this layer. So now everything I do will only affect uh, things on this layer, even though I'm drawing on this layer. So if I suddenly decide to color this yellow, then you see if I press alternate and click on it again, it's actually like this. But then if I alternate and click, the masking is on is onto this layer. So I can just do this, and then after that I press uh, Control. I, I, I okay okay. I click these two layer. Then after I press Control E, then after that it will merge the layer together. Or actually, right, even if I don't click both layer, if I just press Ctrl E, everything from this layer will merge to the bottom layer. So, ta-da! Sorry, uh, I Asian, then I like everything very informatic one. Not very entertaining, uh, but uh, I think this tutorial will still help you. So next is the drawing system that I'm going to talk about. So everyone has their own kind of drawing method and how they go about to finish a drawing. So let me show you uh, a simple way that you can start out. Okay, so the drawing method that I'm going to teach you is what I used to draw this illustration. So now I'm going to teach you how I did that. I'm going to show you the drawing system and the layers that how I used to get there. So first, right, you start with a sketch. So maybe I draw something like this. And then after I draw something like this, okay, I just draw a simple sketch, a loose sketch, okay. Okay, now we have this guy. Okay. Just like this. So first is the sketch. Then I go to the opacity and I lower it. So something like this. Then I create a new layer on top. So this is where my line art is going to be. Okay, so first, okay, so the drawing system, step one is the sketch, step two is the line art. So now when I'm over here already, I'm going to use my brush and remove the pressure sensitivity, uh, uh, the transparency, sorry. I press F5 and then after that I remove this transfer. Now my brush will always be very black. It's not like just now when I click this, right? Then after that, it's like some parts lose the opacity. So a lot right later when I color, 
Then underneath, I can see the color a bit. Compared to if it's black. So you want it to be more similar to like a pen. So now I'll, I'll do it more carefully. Oh, uh, by the way, if your color is not here, right, you can go to window. Basically, everything is here already. Then you can just choose. But I remember the shortcut is F6. That's why I just press F6. Then my color come out. Okay, and then now I can start to do the line art. So the next step is you want to do your base color. So I'm creating a layer below the line art. And then remember to press F6 so that your color is here. Let's say I like this uh, orangey skin tone, yellowish skin tone like this, okay? Because I'm Asian and then that is what I relate to the most. <laughs> Okay, so in this layer, I will color. So generally, right, because, okay, let's say my background is white, right? So if I color a bit out, I cannot really tell because the skin color and the background color is almost the same. So what I do, right, is I will choose a very strong color first. So like this, I color him as like an orangutan first. And then later, then I change the color. So I color it like this. Okay, now, then I come to my hair. Let's say, I just choose a random color first, like, okay? A color with very high contrast, so I can tell like whether I'm coloring outside or not. And now this layer I put on top of the skin. Okay, so I can teach you a trick to color faster. You see I have like gaps in my drawing, right? If I fill these gaps in first. Okay, I fill on I fill in these gaps first. Okay, then I go to the magic wand tool, which is this one, or you can press W, W for wand. Then make sure that you are sampling all layers and tolerance I put to very low first lah, okay? Then when I click like this, you see right, the selection is selecting all, everything that's outside my drawing. So now I can color in very fast. So if you press Ctrl, Shift and I, or actually you can just like right click and put select inverse. Now everything that is selecting is this drawing itself. So when I color, I don't need to like so slowly go and color, make sure every point is colored again. So now I just color in. And then ta-da! Now you have like this blue color hair monkey. Uh. So we are going to change the colors now. Remember I told you about this locking? Okay, you lock all the colors that is inside this layer and you lock this one also. So now when this is locked, only the things in this layer will be affected, right? So now I can change the hair to maybe like a, a brown, a dark brown. And it will only affect this layer. And after that, now I want to change the skin. Then I go and maybe like something like this, okay? Oh, by the way, G is the shortcut for the bucket. G. Then I click, and then now it's like this. And then I can continue creating as many layers as I need. So example for the eyes, I can do this same pattern again. And just color in like this, then later change to white color. So that I don't have so many, uh, so that I don't color outside of the lines. Okay, so this one's for the eye. Maybe I will make one more for the pupil. Okay, now I lock this and I lock and I lock both now, okay? Then after that I change Okay maybe the eye will be more towards this kind of colour. Now then I go and change and then for this one 
Uh, maybe like a darker shade of blue. Okay. Remember to always press Ctrl S and then save your work. I actually have a habit of doing it like every 20 seconds because I'm very scared to lose my work. And it's very sad when you lose when you lose your work, okay? So let me put this like a uh, monkey boy. And then you just save it to wherever. Save as type Photoshop or JPEG or PNG. But for now, since we're still working with um, this file, I'll just save it as Photoshop. Okay. So sometimes if you forget to unlock this, right, then you wonder like, eh, why I cannot color it already? Just remember to unlock, then you can start working on the same layer again. Okay, so now I have all the base colors that I need. Skin, eye, pupil, and the hair. So next, you want to work on the shading. I want you to imagine like a lighting. Okay, so I imagine like I have this uh, yellowish kind of lighting, okay? Okay, let's say, let's say that there's a spotlight over here. Then, um, there are a few ways you can go about this. So, right click. Okay, let me, you can choose like this soft airbrush. So, because the light's here, then your shading generally will be like this, right? So, you can just work on the hair here, like this, you know, like this part brighter, you know, then you can, you can come here and then after that you can like, like maybe make this face like a bit darker over here, like this, you know what I mean? Okay, but um, the other way I want to show you, oh, and since, since I, you just now saw me do something like I select this layer, after I select this layer without even touching here, right, like magic, but actually it's not. So when you're in this tool over here, right, uh, this is, this is the V tool, okay? Okay, it's actually called like the move tool, but you press V, then you go to this tool. Then when you're in this tool, and only in this tool, when you control and click any layer, it will automatically bring you to that layer, so you can work with things very fast. That's why just now I can like, like, oh, I suddenly work here, and after that I, I B click here, and after okay, then I suddenly work here, and if I B click here, and after that I can suddenly work on I. Do it to click, like, like, go and find your layer, like, so now, the faster method I want to show you is that you go to your highest layer, right? You create a layer on top of all your colored layers. Then you control and click this little square box. It will select everything that was in this layer. Then you control shift. You see, I uh, control shift, then you go on plus there, right? So it means you want to add. You add the things that you're, that is on the next layer and the next layer. You see, uh? okay, I'll show you. Control D, D, select, right? Then you control click this. You control shift click. You add this, you see, your selection actually is everything of what we have drawn just now. So now I can add things onto both these layers. So let's say I go to multiply. Multiply is basically to multiply the colors of whatever is below this layer. So now that I have selected already my skin and my hair, then I want this yellowish, yellowish kind of sun. I can just go in and do this to both layers at once. So I don't need to like color one layer at a time. See, you see? So everything that is below this layer is all affected. So I can even go and color the eye everything without needing to to one by one choose the layer and slowly uh, color one layer at a time. Then I can just like control click the hair and then, and then I color like this part of the hair. And then if I select the face, then I don't want the hair, then I can control and alternate, then this thing will come minus. So control shift is plus is to add something. Control alternate is to minus away the selection. Okay, so now right, what I have done in this layer was the lighting. But now I still I want to change the base color, or you can say it's like local color. So because skin is not exactly all pale. I want to have areas where it is more red. So generally, like the cheeks, you know, blushing cause like he's gay. I, I mean, like blushing cause like he see a girl, you know. Okay, so he like this. Okay, like this. 
you see when I do it this way right even though he's he's uh, blushing here because I have this layer on top and it's affecting all of it the shading still helps still works onto this blush so I need to slowly slowly adjust everything so now that I am quite happy with this okay pupil let's say pupil right okay uh, pupil okay this one then maybe I'll make it a bit darker so what you're missing now is a bit of lighting right but let's say I want my lighting to be on top of the line art so I create a layer on top of it and do the lighting I only do this when my shading and my color off in 3D so it's like this is like the detailing part so maybe I want to cross over the, the line art that's why I put it on top of the line art to add a like a extra touch or so right you can even lock your line art go to airbrush and like because face usually don't have line art right so to make it more like pale the line art you can even change the line art color you know this, this is what you always see like in webtoon people do this this kind of thing to make just to add a little something something then you always wonder like why why that one look so nice then man like like not so nice or you think like hey, why some people look like they have line art but then like no line art like so, so sometimes people just change the line art color So now you have this guy, okay? Uh, let me teach you something very important. So is how to flip your canvas to see the mistake. You see, actually, his face so wonky. On when I flip, then I can see. Okay, so how to flip your canvas? You need to have this actions thing. So uh, let me just close it first. Let me just close it first. When you go to Windows, actions is over here. You want to make a new action because there is no uh, flipping horizontally. You cannot flip your canvas in Photoshop uh, unless you click a lot of different things. So you go to create a new action, it's this plus. Same as creating a new layer, you create a new action. Then let's say I call this flip uh, canvas. And I change the function key to something that all the shortcuts never use, like maybe F2. Okay, so I start recording. I start recording and I go to image, image rotation. Flip canvas horizontal and then I quickly stop this uh, recording. So now Photoshop has recorded an action. So when I press F2, now my canvas will flip. And then you can also use this to create any shortcut that you want that Photoshop doesn't have. Lah. Now I close this, I close this. So I use this to check my work usually. Like sometimes when I flip, then I realize something is a bit off. Okay, so now that I'm quite happy with this, I want to add some finishing touches. I'm going to off the background for a while. And then when I press Control, Shift, Alternate and E, it will create everything that was shown just now into a flat layer. So let me just press this and then I Shift click this so it select everything. Then I press Control G. Control G will put into the group and then I off everything that is uh, below this layer that I just created. Like I basically I flatten it lah, okay? I flatten the layer. And then now I want to to work on this layer itself. So like like maybe the hair need a bit more highlight. And I come here and then I choose uh, something like this. Now I can give the hair a bit of a highlight. Okay. So I have also used uh, the actions tool to actually go into this mixer mixer brush. When you right click, when you right click certain things, certain tools, right? You can have even more tools. So. I right click the brush and then I go to mix the brush too. So this basically help you to blend um, to blend things on the same layer. Like you can use 
any other brush for this blending brush so but I'm gonna use this like bristly bristly kind of brush so that I can have the hair kind of texture so if I do this then after that I have like this this kind of effect Okay, so now we have something like this. I'll use the lasso tool, L. Maybe just delete this. So now we have this random guy. So the next part of um, this drawing system is the details. Once you have generally uh, every everything drawn already, then you can start adding things to make it look even nicer. So let me go to a different brush, and then now I can like select this hair color, you know, and then maybe have some loose loose strands and then after that like this maybe okay loose strands loose strands remember to press alternate when you're in the brush to switch to the color uh, the color select tool Okay, I will lock this layer and maybe I add a bit of a, like a, a cool kind of bounce light. So I go to the airbrush and then maybe I just like do this, you know, a bit cool a bit. Okay, so this is just an example of a drawing system. La. Then the very last step, you add all your details and everything. Then I merge this down, then after that, you can even oh okay so Photoshop one of the very um commonly used tool is in filter. You go to um liquify. So let's say I have like like maybe the eye like a bit uh crooked I can just like control it and you know move it here. Make maybe make him look a little more like pervert like you know, like make the eye like that, you know. But you know what I mean? Then there are things like uh, Pucker 2. Pucker 2 is basically you make things smaller. So if one eye is bigger than the other, you can make in like this. But like this like a bit racist. Like, you know, make his eyes so small like me like that. So don't do that. Uh. So maybe I can like bloat it, you know, make it bigger, make it more. Kira kira desu, you know. And then, um, yeah, maybe the hair here is a bit too outside. You know, I can like adjust, adjust like this. Okay, then you press enter and you save it. You can press Ctrl Z and Ctrl Shift Z to undo, redo, undo, redo, see which one you like more. Okay. So yeah, that's basically it lah for the drawing system. There are a lot of other things you can play with, like you see all this, you, all these different adjustment. You know, brightness, contrast. Uh, my favorite one, adjustment, selective color. Then after that I can, I can, like make the reds more reds, make the the things like you see like the eye is blue then after that I can make the blue even more blue you know uh, like this okay just some additional things to say is that if you essentially find all your tools missing right maybe you essentially press tap because when you press tap everything is gone this one usually people use to like look more closely at their artwork don't want the things to distract you or if you essentially press F F is basically uh, for full screen so F for full screen. Yeah, so if you press F or tap, then maybe uh, your tools will come back. Hey, thank you for watching so far. Since you watched so far, I will give you one special tip. If you want to use reference, but you don't want to keep alternate tap and see your reference and then come back to Photoshop and then alternate tap again, you can just create new, so Control N. 
and then you have this here you don't even need to save the image you just right click copy image then after that you paste into photoshop then you you can like use multiple reference let's say you want this guy skating but then maybe you want like like this green skateboard then you can like copy multiple references and put in like this then you can click this and drag it out so so you can have you can have your reference over here and after that at the other side you can have your have your drawing and everything okay then you can you can draw here then you don't need to keep all don't need to keep alternate tab to go and see google just put just split your your photoshop files into two different and then can really so like this so, so this is how i usually draw so like i have my reference on the left and after that i have my drawing on the right okay so thank you for listening for so long already the last part i want to say is don't give up try to use photoshop every day if you can or use it as like your main drawing software then you'll learn very fast everything you don't know just google everything you don't know just youtube yeah that's all i have to say thank you very much and i hope that this tutorial was useful and i can't wait to see your create amazing artworks with photoshop